You know what I really, really hated about this movie? It made me realise what a complete fucking idiot I am. Basically, the way that this uh, happened for me was, uh, obviously you've got uh, the Disney renaissance, uh, like back in the 90s, you know, all those great films, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, The Lion King, uh, whatever. Uh, all great traditionally animated Disney films. And then they go and do the CGI films and, uh, you know, they're all, they're all crap. They're all crappy films. Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, Bolt. Didn't bother with any of them. They were all crap. Then they go and make The Princess and the Frog traditionally animated again. It's like, oh, great! Disney have gone back to their roots. The brilliant traditional animation. Yeah, great film. Love it. Now you got Tangled. It's uh, CGI again. I was like, oh. Oh, well. Princess and the Frog was nice. Obviously, they've just gone back to doing crappy CGI films now. Won't bother with it. That's just a classic case for me of judging a book by its cover. Never going to do that again. Absolutely never. Just assumed, because it was CGI, that it was going to be crap. This film is freaking incredible. It is actually right up there with uh, some of the best that Disney have ever done. The only thing I don't really like about it is the fact that it's CGI. I don't mind CGI, but I just think it probably would have been better if, if it were a traditional animation. I think... You know, I, I prefer that kind of look when it comes to Disney films myself. But anyway, let's uh, properly talk about the film. I know obviously it's Rapunzel, uh, sort of given them maybe a sort of more modern twist, uh, given maybe more sort of explanation as to why she's got long hair, why she lives in a tower, and uh, giving her hair magic powers. I don't really remember the story of Rapunzel particularly vividly, but I don't recall her being her hair having magic powers uh, in the original fairy tale. Uh, and um, you got some some really uh, sort of strong, uh, very sort of different kind of characters here. You've got the uh, the male lead, the sort of, sort of second in command hero, if you like, Flynn Rider, who is actually a thief, actually not a particularly good person to start off with. You know, we, we actually see him stealing a crown. You know, this is the guy we're supposed to like. And, you know, you know, I think w w that may be sort of trying to show him maybe that he's maybe has no choice because you see him with these two thugs who are maybe kind of forcing him to do it. Yeah, and also at the same time he's being introduced as being given this kind of um, comedic edge to him. You know, he, he's not so much the comic relief in this film, but there is kind of a sort of smarmy, kind of cocky attitude to him. Yeah, that, that's really kind of uh, interesting. You know, he's he's a thief, he's the male lead, but he's also kind of cocky at the same time. That's, that's a really kind of interesting combination of uh, character traits you've got there. Rapunzel, on the other hand, she's she's kind of more sort of normal. She's She's, she's a very strong sort of female character, but she's a sort of typical kind of strong female character that just sort of has this thirst to prove herself and wants more out of life. Uh, when you can hardly blame her, she's spending her entire life in a tower and not allowed to leave ever. I find it kind of odd, actually, that she has such a good relationship with uh, this woman, Mother Gothel, I believe she was called. Uh, she has quite a good relationship with this woman uh, because she thinks she's her mother, and yet she never leaves her lets her leave the tower, you know, if, if that were me, I would just be like, fuck you mum, I'm, I'm leaving the tower, whatever you say, show her to have quite a good, sort of healthy relationship with her, that's probably, you know, the reason why she has stayed in the tower all this time, even though she wants to leave, she just is sort of very loyal to her mum, you know, we don't really see, you know, what her mother does uh, to care for her or to help her gain her trust or anything over the years, I, I guess she just did a good job raising her which is kind of interesting because she ends up being the villain. There's a couple of uh, sort of, uh, you know, the, the classic comic relief uh, animal characters that Disney do, but they don't speak. You know, they're, they're kind of like the ones you see in Pocahontas, uh, you know, the dog and the raccoon. Uh, that was the one good thing about Pocahontas, if you ask me. Uh, you know, the, these non-talking animal characters that kind of act as comic relief. You've kind of got them here as well. You've got a chameleon whose name I forget, and then you've got this horse called Maximus, I believe. Uh, both sort of just the facial expressions and the various sort of actions they do uh, throughout the film, very kind of funny that, that they alone are, are worth seeing just for that, you know, you know throw the story out and just watch these creatures, you know, with Pocahontas that was the case for me, just throw the story out and just watch those animals, you know, that, that, that was enough uh, to get me through the film that, uh, but here you've actually got a good film to go with these uh, animal characters just sort of doing their thing along the way uh, and another really kind of interesting thing I think was uh, this kind of evolution of uh, Rapunzel and Flynn Rider's relationship. It starts out like 
the most intense and most awkward situation imaginable uh, of uh, Flynn Rider actually breaking in to Rapunzel's tower and she knocks him out with a frying pan so, and then she they kind of sort of have to make a bit of a deal you know Flynn Rider's not exactly sort of up for it uh, and then sort of later on he actually tries to sort of you know double cross her and uh, go out of it take advantage of the fact that she's still guilty about leaving her tower so he says okay I'm backing out of the deal and I'm taking you back to the tower because you obviously feel too guilty uh, and uh, it is kind of interesting you know it's kind of demonstrating at that stage you know that their relationship is still a little awkward there's still not this kind of interesting trust uh, and then of course there's a scene uh, I think in a tunnel after they escape uh, this pub called Snuggly Duckling and then another scene on the campfire where everything clicks that really made this one of the strongest sort of love interest uh, stories I've ever seen in a Disney film you see the moment where it clicks you actually see the moment when they suddenly sort of realise that you know they, they do have feelings for one another the thing that really bugged me about Beauty and the Beast was there wasn't really that moment where it all clicked between the Beast and Belle. You know, it was just one moment, you know, they were at each other's throats, and then the next moment they were getting along quite nicely. There was no sort of moment where it all changed, you know, it all sort of started out, oh, I hate you, oh, no, I hate you, it's a... and then it kind of evolu gets a little bit of an evolution. I guess kind of the scene where Belle is heeding the Beast's arm there's a little bit of it that in there, but then it's just the next scene. Oh, I've never felt about this way about anyone before. Or something. It's just a sudden change. That's the one thing about Beauty and the Beast that bugged me. With this, you don't have that. You actually have this kind of scene that kind of evolves slowly. And then Mother Gothel actually comes in part way through it. And it's actually in Flynn Rider's absence that Rapunzel sort of realises, you know, actually she, she does have feelings for this guy. And she wants to think that he has feelings for her, so... She actually uh, suggests that she just give him back the satchel, which is the one reason why he was here in the first place. Very interesting. I, I really, really like that. Uh, the hair, I find it kind of hard to believe that, uh, you know, I suppose having lived in a tower for all those years, you know, it's acceptable to believe that she would have just been able to maintain like 40 feet of hair or whatever over all that time. But I can't believe that she can actually walk around in public with all that hair trailing behind her. That seems a bit unrealistic but you know it's a fantasy you know, I, can, I can forgive that apparently also when her hair is cut not only does it turn brown but it also stops growing because you see that one strand that uh, is cut when she's a baby uh, when she's kidnapped it's still the same length when she grows up it, has, it hasn't grown at all that's, that's kind of weird I guess that's what magical hair does is there anything I don't like about it let me think one kind of minor thing that kind of bugged me is uh, when she gets into the castle town, uh, they have these girls tie her up her hair in um, kind of a ponytail or something, uh, and it's not laying on the ground like at all at that point. It's all just uh, supported by her head. Can you imagine how much... We saw how much hair she has. Can you imagine how much that must weigh? You know, shouldn't she be walking around sort of like this? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. How much must all that hair weigh? I don't know. That was uh, you know, just something that personally bugged me. You know, again, it's a kid's film, it's a fantasy. It's not supposed to make sense, really, that. But uh, is there anything really to do with the story that uh, I, I didn't like? I didn't like the way Flynn Rider was saved at the end. Basically what happens is uh, Rapunzel makes this kind of bargain with her mum, who she now knows by this point isn't her mum. Uh, to heal Flynn Rider and then to go off and be her prisoner. Uh, I don't really... If I were Mother Gothel, I would have said, no, there's no way I can trust you on that. You know, you, I can't possibly believe you're just going to keep your promise for the rest of your life like that. You know, you, you are at some point going to escape. You know, temptation's going to get the best of you. you know? No, no. I, if I were Mother Gothel, I would not agree to that at all because I, I wouldn't be able to trust Rapunzel by that point. Basically, what Flynn Rider does is to, to stop her from being taken away by her mother, at least he cuts her hair uh, and essentially just sort of sacrifices himself, which obviously is a very sort of noble thing to do, heroic kind of thing to do. Uh, and um, then basically you have the dilemma that uh, Flynn Rider is injured and in a situation of dying and Rapunzel has no way of healing him. So what happens basically is Rapunzel cries 
and that heals him. Don't get that. Don't understand how that works. You know, it, it's the magical power. Has it now been transferred from her hair to her eyes or something? I mean, we, we see that the hair loses its power, and we see the Mother Gothel uh, returns back to old, so the power no longer exists, you would assume. So where is this new power from her tears coming from? And, I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like a bit of a cop-out to me. This actually uh, threw me back a little bit to um, one of the Nostalgia Critics reviews, uh, where he complains about, I think, the Pokemon film, where one of the characters is healed because they're crying, and he thinks that's kind of ridiculous, which it is in a way. Uh, and he says, oh, a company like Disney would never do that. You know, you've got to imagine that happening in The Lion King or something. You know? and what do you know? It does happen in a Disney film. I didn't like the way that the king and queen never speak. It would have been nice to have found out exactly who it was that Rapun Rapunzel's real mother and father that she was spending the whole film trying to get back to. Yeah, I'd like to have actually known who these characters were, but they don't even speak. Like I said before, I didn't like the fact that it's CGI. I would have preferred traditional animation. CGI looks nice. Uh, one other thing, actually, I didn't like. There's a scene where they're trapped in a cave, uh, and they have no way out, and um, it's filling with water. And the only way that they could escape, basically, is by finding a hole uh, in some rocks that have collapsed around them and then and basically moving them. But basically, uh, he's saying, oh, there's no point in us trying to do that because it's pitch black, you can't see a thing down there. And basically what happens is Rapunzel sings and her hair glows, and now they can see a way out. I don't really understand why uh, Flynn Rider would be saying that there's no point them trying to make an escape simply because it's pitch black. You may as well try because you're going to die otherwise. You know, If I'm trapped in a lock room that's filling with water that's pitch black, I'm going to try and escape in any way that I can, even if it's pitch black. Uh, but overall, great film. Uh, you've probably already seen it if you've uh, watched this video because it has this video had a ton of spoilers in it. Uh, but, you know, go, go buy it, go rent it and uh, watch it again. Uh, because this this is a great film. Uh, this is definitely up there as uh, one of my favourite uh, Disney films. I'm not sure if it's as good as Princess and the Frog, though. Because I loved Princess and the Frog in, in every possible way. I've heard some complaints that the story's a little too complicated. I don't know, I didn't see that, it didn't bother me. Uh, it probably had some stronger female characters in it, Princess and the Frog. Uh, this has a lot less characters, and the story is a lot easier to follow. I guess that's what people mean when they compare this to Princess and the Frog. You know, this has a much simpler story and a much sim much smaller sort of cast of characters than Princess and the Frog. So for a kids' film, maybe this is better. Personally, I think Princess and the Frog is just a little bit better, but they are both great. Go see them both if you haven't already. Okay, I will see you guys soon.